Hello, my name's Caroline, also known as Carnite. In this video, I'll show you how to integrate your 3D characters into a real photo. This is a photo of my garden, and I put a couple of bears in it. And you can see that they're incorporated into the scene by the use of shadows. Let's start with the scene with the two bears that I created earlier. There's nothing in this scene except for the two bears and their clothes. First of all, I'll set up the backdrop, edit menu, backdrop, and browse, and choose the photo. The picture stretches out to whatever your render settings are. So I'll change my render settings on the render menu to display wide 5x4 settings and make it render to the active viewport. Now I've got a box showing me the dimensions of the render and the photo is not stretched anymore. When I render this, the bears aren't anchored into the scene by shadows and it looks as if they're just floating in mid-air. Rotate the camera until the bears look as if they're at the right angle and position as if they were in the photo. And now I'll create a primitive plane to catch the shadows. Move the plane to the right position so that it will capture the shadows properly. And we need a light to create the shadows, so I'll create a new distant light. And the shadows are coming from this direction, so I'll look through the light to try and get the same angle so that the shadows appear behind and to the right of the bears. Change the shadow type of the distant light to be deep shadow map and also change the plane so it doesn't cast shadows so we don't get shadows from the plane itself. And do a test render to see if the shadows are in the right position. Once you have the shadows in the right place, we can work on the surface of the plane. Obviously where there is no shadow, we want the plane to be transparent, and we want it to be opaque where there is a shadow. Using the Surface Selection tool, select the surface of the plane. Go into View Menu, Tabs, Shader Mixer, and click Far Menu, New. There's a special brick called Shadow Catcher under Insert Bricks or Bricks, Functions, Lighting, Shadow Catcher. What Shadow Catcher does is output an image map of where the shadows actually are. I'll show you what that map looks like by plugging it straight into the color channel and disconnect the opacity. So all we have here is the Shadow Catcher going directly into color. Apply this to the surface and render. What we can see on the plane is the actual output of the shadow catcher brick and you can see that it's a perfect transparency map. Black will be transparent and white will be opaque. So when we go into Shader Mixer, I'll just connect back the connections. If I plug the shadow catcher into the opacity channel and click apply and render, the transparency map comes into effect. So wherever it was black, it's now transparent. And that's the basics of the shadow catcher brick. The tricky part's choosing a suitable photo. If you have objects like walls in the scenes, you have to have models to catch the shadows. In my photo, I was able to get away with just one flat plane, but in a different photo you might have to include several primitives to imitate surfaces that would catch shadows. However, you can see that these shadows are much too strong as compared to the other shadows in the picture. So in the next video, I'll show you how to make a strength slider so that we can adjust the strength of the shadows. Thanks for watching. I hope it was helpful.